church. He probably had a desire to become a, a pastor or a missionary or something. It is good to dream. It's good to desire things. The uh, success and the life of success is for the efficient. If you dare to dream, if you dare to strive, if you dare to invest your time, your effort into something, you will accomplish it. And now with the help of God, now we have the help of God. In the world, you know, you try, you do things, but now that you have the help of God, and uh, you have someone that you can call, someone that you can uh, ask for help, and God is always there to help you. Listen, God desires always to answer the prayer of his people. God always wants to answer your prayers. Sometimes it will take a little time. Sometimes it will come fast. But it all depends on you. If you, if you believe God, if you wait upon the Lord, your strength will be renewed and uh, you will see the answer to your prayers take place. But it is in the nature of God. It is in the nature of God to answer the prayer of his people. Okay. Uh, the same way that is in his nature to be holy, to be a good God, to uh, be uh, generous. It is in God's nature. It's in his nature to be loving, to be caring. Uh, it, uh, it's not something that God acquires or takes from some place. It is in his nature. And I'm teaching you this because many times you bring a, a prayer request or you have a, a prayer before the Lord, and uh, you know it's just taking too long. It's taking too long. Where is my God? Even the psalmist asked one time, you know, where is my God? Where is God? But I'm going to say something to you, which is a truth that no one can stand and debate me on this. God, in His nature, He as God always wants to answer your prayer. You don't, don't give up. Don't give up. How many times shall I pray? Pray until you get an answer. Don't cease. Don't stop. Continue praying. And this is why it was so difficult. It was so, uh, uh, how can I say it? It was so much that his only begotten son is praying to him, deliver me, help me God, and, and in his nature is to answer, to help, but he, he, he's not going to do it. Because he's prophesied. And this is what's happening in our story today. He's prophesied that he's, he's going to die, he's going to be crucified for the redemption of the world. And I could just see God wanting to, uh, to, to send 12 legions of angels and deliver him from the hands of the Romans. But he restrained because of you and because of me, because of our salvation. So maybe you have a prayer request. Maybe you're praying for something. I don't know what it is. For a healing. For a job. For your family. For your children. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that most of us here have something that we're praying for. And uh, you may say, well, I don't know, God is taking too long. You know, Jesus gave a parable of the unjust uh, judge. And he said, there was this city, and in that city, 
there was a, a, a judge who didn't care for people and did not mind God. He was a judge, but he didn't really care for God or care for the people. This is, a, this is from the lips of Jesus. And a widow came to him and said, Judge, intervene. Do justice and deliver me from the lawsuit of the adversaries. They sue me, but I'm innocent. And they want to take my home. They want to take everything. Have mercy on me. And uh, Jesus said, listen to what the judge said. Although he didn't care for God, he had no respect for people, this is what the judge said. This is coming from the lips of our pastor. He says, because this widow keeps coming constantly, every day, every day, do me justice, judge. Lest I get frustrated and then do something, I'm going to do justice. And the unjust, ungodly judge did good to that will. And Jesus said, how much more your heavenly father, which is good, which cares for people, and men are to always pray and ask his pray and believe and trust in God. When the hope is lost, when the dream perish, when we feel like we're not getting we're not getting no no place. The death of a dream. Let me read what the preacher has here. It says all of us believe at one time or another and uh, are confronted with adversity and the enemies of our dreams. Our dreams have enemies. You dream to do something, there's enemies. At times the adversity is so overwhelmed that it feels like the vision of greatness has died. A good example this is what the preacher is saying. And the preacher is me. <laughs> a good example is Joseph. Joseph had a, 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 a dream. In fact, he had two dreams. A greatness. A vision. God spoke to him in a dream. And uh, he says, you're going to be great. And your brothers are going to come and uh, bow before you. He went to his brothers, 11 brothers. He was the youngest. He was 17 years old. He said, you know, I had a dream last night. And you guys are going to come and you're going to bow before me. Oh, they got so mad. First of all, they didn't like him because he was the youngest. And he was a cheap lady. You know, they could always care for him. They always do a special clothes for him. So if you're the youngest in the family, you, you are going to buy it, right? Yes. Your older siblings don't see you right. Papa's boy, Mama's boy. That's, that's how Joseph was. And then he had a second dream. And in the second dream, he dreamed that the, the moon and the sun bowed down to him. And he went and told his brothers, listen, I had a second dream. The sun and the moon were uh, kneeling down, bowing down to me. So they got, they got angry. They didn't like it. And Joseph, in his heart,